there are tens of thousands of whey proteins that are out on the market. So that would definitely lead us to believe that not all of them are high quality, right? And unfortunately, reading a label and reading a nutrition panel is not something that we actually learn in school. So in this video, I'm gonna give you what you need to be looking for and what you need to be avoiding when it comes down to your whey protein choices. Hey, I'm Tom Stallauer. I'm the lead trainer and the lead nutritionist over here at sixpackabs.com. Okay, all of your content coming in the world of keto, fasting, but also in the way of exercise, you can find right here. So in today's video, we're breaking down whey protein. All right, the first thing that I want you to look for when you're looking at whey protein, and something that you really wanna to try to avoid whenever possible, is going to be hydrogenated oils. Hear me out on this. Here's the thing, hydrogenated oils are everywhere. We see them in all kinds of things. We see them in peanut butter, we see them in this and that. It's a preservative in a way. Basically, it improves the shelf life. But when we're talking about whey proteins, what they end up doing is they end up giving it a creamier, thicker consistency. Okay, that's fine. We understand that things need to taste good, but when it has a creamy, thick consistency like that, you end up altering the cell membranes because these hydrogenated fats cannot be broken down by the body. Hydrogenated fats are literally regular fats that have been heated to an extreme temperature and then have had hydrogen bubble through them to ultimately make it a solid. So essentially, you're creating an artificial fat that the body doesn't know how to break down. This process breaks down and alters our cell membranes so that the body doesn't break them down right. So most fats, like CIS fats they're called, break down within the body in about 18 days. I know that still sounds like a long time, but fats take a long time to fully, totally break down within the body until they're completely eliminated. Well, artificial fats, like hydrogenated fats, end up taking 51 days, okay? Now, what they end up doing is they block the production of what are called prostaglandins one and three. Okay, prostaglandins type one and three are very important to the inflammatory response within the body. If we block these prostaglandins, our body has a hard time modulating the inflammation process. This is the last thing that you want when you just trained hard. You're working out hard, you have inflammation, now it's the job of your body to actually modulate that inflammation and get you back so you can recover and train again. If you're blocking type one and three prostaglandins, this is never occurring. You're totally biting your nose to spite your face. So stay away from the hydrogenated oils. They're just there to improve margin for a lot of these companies to help out shelf life so they don't have to manage inventory quite as much. The next thing you wanna be careful of is of course aspartame. Now you're gonna see a lot of different whey proteins out there that have aspartame. They have sucralose, they have stevia, but by far the one you wanna pay attention to the most is going to be aspartame. And the reason I say that is because it has the most powerful, potent, what is called an excitotoxin effect. Okay, this excitotoxin effect is where the brain becomes hypersensitive to a super sweet taste to the point that it literally has to draw energy from tomorrow for today. It's like you created this sweet taste out of thin air. The brain still has to process it. It still sees it as sweet. So it's called an excitotoxin. It has some pretty negative effects in the body. So you wanna be careful with that. So try to look for things that are sweetened with stevia, whatever possible, it doesn't have as much of that excitotoxin effect. But maltodextrin is a big one, especially if you're on a low carb diet or a keto diet, because maltodextrin is very, 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 very high glycemic. Okay, derived from a starch, it's not exactly what we want in a whey protein. The reason it's there is usually as a thickener. Okay, it helps prevent crystallization, it helps prevent caking. It does a lot of things when it comes down to, again, inventory management, inventory control, but not something you wanna be putting in your body. You see, we already spike our insulin pretty high with whey protein to begin with because it digests so damn quick. But when it comes down to adding something like maltodextrin into the mix, then you're spiking your insulin even harder. Definitely something you don't want on a low carb diet. But speaking of spiking, you also have to be careful of what is called nitrogen and amino spiking. So when you look at a label, if you see a bunch of random amino acids that are added into the mix, it's usually an indicator that they're amino spiking. Now what that means is they're adding cheap aminos that don't necessarily comprise a complete protein simply to get the label to officially and legally by FDA standards show a higher protein count. So let's say your protein powder naturally contains 15 grams of protein per serving, but they can add a few extra kinds of amino acids in there and get that number up to 20, even though it's not a true complete protein that's actually gonna give you the desired effect. So be very, very careful of that. It's called nitrogen spiking and it's very common because people are usually just looking for the protein count. I encourage you to look at protein in a different way. Look at the quality over just the protein count. So what do you wanna look for in the way of positive things though? You wanna be looking for whey protein isolate. Okay, whey protein concentrate has a lot of lactose. Now, I'm not totally anti-whey protein concentrate if it's good quality, but whey protein isolate, you have a lot more flexibility because you don't have as much of the garbage or the lactose or the milk solids in there. You have the pure isolated, operative word, protein that's coming from the whey protein. So you wanna go for grass-fed, grass-finished whey protein isolate whenever possible, much cleaner, easier for your body to metabolize. 
Okay, the other thing you want to look at is a high level of polyphenols or antioxidants. So we're talking about things like natural cocoa, we're talking about things like acerola fruit or some kind of fruit extracts that are going to be in there. Believe it or not, it sounds petty, but these antioxidants and polyphenols have a huge effect. Here's what happens. When you consume whey protein, it absorbs super lightning fast, like crazy lightning fast. And when that happens, you end up having a high degree of oxidative damage. Every time you eat, you have oxidative damage. You have waste products, things that occur. Okay, but when it happens faster, it happens more abruptly. And that means the body has a harder time bringing those levels down of the oxidative damage, right? So you consume things, you have a lot of waste. You have to control that waste. So I like protein powders that have things like cocoa that are polyphenols or things that have vitamin C in them, things that help that. So look for that, it's a powerful, powerful thing. So the next thing you want to look for is the type of binder, okay? You want them to be using acacia gum or acacia fiber or something like that because that is a very nice, healthy, balanced binding agent that still gives it thickness but without all the garbage. The nice thing about acacia fiber is that it actually has a wide degree of prebiotic effects, which means it feeds multiple kinds of bacteria in your gut. So when that happens, you're getting your gut bacteria what it needs to actually grow and thrive. Whereas a lot of protein powder is gonna give you just the opposite, where it actually ends up killing off your gut bacteria. So we want that nice promotion there. We want that prebiotic effect. And we want the stimulation of what's called butyric acid. Very good stuff, okay? We want that butyrate. Now, when it comes down to consuming whey protein on a ketogenic diet, you wanna make sure that the protein is a little bit lower. You don't need to have massive amounts of protein because you simply don't need it. And it's a waste of energy and a waste of calories. You just don't need it. So that's why Six Pack Abs is a huge fan of Perfect Keto's whey protein. You see, what they've done is they've managed to put five grams of MCT oil in a powder form alongside 15 grams of very high quality grass-fed whey protein isolate. Now, you don't need a lot of MCTs. You don't need to be combining a bunch of fats and carbs, but you need just enough MCTs to trigger a catecholamine response. Here's what I mean. MCT oil has been shown to trigger a little bit of an adrenaline spike. It absorbs so fast that it increases your body's adrenaline and epinephrine, meaning it increases your body's energy expenditure at rest. The European Journal of Clinical Nutrition actually published a study that found this. Literally just a few grams of MCT oil throughout the course of the day raises your resting metabolic rate or your resting energy expenditure by 5%. So when you put that into a powder form along with whey protein, you have a double whammy effect. And here's why. The whey protein already has a thermic effect. It's hard to break down protein. And when you consume it fast in a whey form, your body's gonna have to elevate its core body temperature really quick to process it. Then you combine that with the MCTs, you have the catecholamine effect with the adrenaline, boom, double whammy in terms of fat loss while your body is already a fat burning furnace at that very point in time because you're on keto. But Perfect Keto has also managed to sweeten it with stevia so you don't have any garbage in there and they've managed to use acacia fiber as the fiber. And then of course they're adding sea salt into the mix because they know that you need that mineral profile too. So because you are a six pack abs fan and because you're watching this video, there's a special link for you to get a discount on Perfect Keto's whey protein. So a keto whey protein that's clean, that I stand behind if you're into whey, and something that's gonna actually taste good and make it feel like you're never missing a beat on keto. So I hope that this gave you the breakdown, whether you're keto or not, or whether you decide to take advantage of Perfect Keto's whey protein or not, I want you to have the goods. I want you to be armed with the knowledge that you can go to the store or go online, look at a label, and know exactly what you need to live the best healthy life possible. I'll see you in the next Six Pack Gabs video.